Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, welkom bij de Dark Podcast van Nederland achter de hockey. En vandaag zijn we weer terug met de Corona Tapes. En ja, Pim, wat hebben we vandaag? Uh, we hebben vandaag een hele bijzondere gast. Hij is de beste darter van zijn continent, maar het is ook onze eerste internationale gast. Ladies and gentlemen, de beste Brazilian darts player, Diego Portela. Hi guys. How are you doing in this Corona Times? Um, yeah, it's been difficult, um, but uh, I think I think you need to to take positive from uh, any kind of uh, bad situation. And uh, I hadn't seen my wife for I think two or three months, and because of this coronavirus, now she can't travel anymore, and she's pregnant. So I'm I'm taking the time to spend with my wife and with my uh, daughter to be, you know, because. Um, I I didn't have much time since since we found out we uh, she was pregnant. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm not practicing as much as I was before. I'm just trying to spend the time with the family. So it's it's been a long time since I have that. So I, I'm just trying to make the most of it because I never know when the season starts again. Uh, mm-hmm. If I'll be able to to be. Uh, with them as much time as I am now, so I'm trying to to take advantage of it. Yeah, well, first of all, congratulations with the pregnancy of your wife. Of course, that's uh, more important than playing darts. But you said you you didn't really practice a lot. But um, how do you still practice every day? How like how many hours do I have to think a week? Is there is there still a schedule you? You do, or what do you have uh, to think? Um, uh, uh, first, thanks for the congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it was my, it's my first kid, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's only two months to go now. Um, but yeah, regarding the darts, I'm not. I, I I didn't put my darts away. I'm still practicing. I'm just not um, not giving a hundred percent as I was before because I I don't know when when the tournaments will come back. So. What I'm trying to do, to do is um, pushing players in Brazil to practice. So I'm playing a lot online with them. Um, we set up a league just to play for fun, you know, in Brazil. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of players joining now the online league because I'm playing there and they all want to play me. And, you know, that's it's very good. Uh, I'm trying to focus my time on that to play the people in Brazil. But uh, I also do about one or two hours every other day. So one okay. day I practice, one day I'm fully with my family, one day I practice, one day I'm fully with my with my family. Okay, well, that sounds great. Even if you're not in Brazil, you're still supporting the darts over here. So uh, that's, that's really good uh, to hear. Um, we're going to talk about Brazilian darts and South, South American darts more in general. Um, in a while too. So, um, do you also do you also play uh, darts online against other bigger players, or you can find time to do that? Uh, when I was um, when when the season is on, um, then I I used to play a few players like Robert Owen, uh, Michael Rastovitz, mm-hmm. um, uh, in. in online you know so um now i'm only focusing on playing players that need support you know because i don't have time usually when the season is on i don't have time to to spend and to give for these players and now that i have time i want to make the most of it so i I, like for a few times trying to support as well the government um i i i I went online on Facebook and on Instagram, and I play and I played players that want to play me because they never have a chance. You no, know, so amateurs players or just fans that want to play me. So I'm trying to give my time for these people. When I when I usually when the season is on, when the season is on, I I can't do it. You know, so I'm trying to enjoy instead of. You know, take that as my uh, professional career and put it um, a lot serious as I used to. You know, this time I'm I'm just enjoying because if 
if I get mad about being perfect in the moment that there is no tournament, I might get myself in a bad situation and I don't want to be there. I just want to smile and enjoy my life, you know, even in these uh, moments of crisis. We have talked to multiple players uh, already, Mike van Dijvenbode, Mike de Decker, um, and other players too. And they they all say the same. They say, well, we, we don't know when the next tournament is. So really practicing um, like we used to doesn't really, they, they don't really do that. Do you also need uh, a tournament, a, a, a specific date to go and really practice hard like you used to do? Um, uh, I think so, but it's not that. It's not only that, it's because we don't know how long this crisis will be. You know, if we think, for example, in the next two weeks, things things will get better, then everyone will be back on the board. I bet, I bet that, I know, I, I'm sure there will be a lot more people practicing hard if things are starting to get a little bit better with this crisis, because that means that sooner or later, the tournament will come, you know, we don't need actually a, a date. We just need um, uh, some kind of guidance that this crisis is getting to an end and then mm -hmm. everyone will be back. It, that's my opinion. Uh, okay. Um, I, I think it's time to go uh, review your season of 2020. Um, it's it's not that big of a season, of course, uh, yet. Um the year started at Q School. Uh, yeah, can you tell more about it? It didn't really end up ended up well like you wanted to be. Am I right? Um, uh, well, uh, of course, the um, the dream is always to get a tour card. But um, less before the Q School, I had a um, really tough twelve to eighteen months. You know, I was trying to find myself again. I was trying to improve. I was changing darts and changing um, a little bit my my throw. And uh, I, I always I always try new things um, to see if I can improve. But the things I did it didn't help me. And uh, by the end of 2019, I I was lack on confidence. So I, I needed to put my head right in, in about two or three weeks after the World Championship. And I used the Q School to actually um, put my mind right for the season. I knew I wouldn't get the tool card, but I just didn't want to um, suffer for a, a losing game as I was suffering before, you know, because I was really... Um, how can I say, I was really knocking myself out and I didn't want to do that because I love playing darts and I don't want to go to a tournament and come back uh, really upset or crying or, you know, really damage my self-esteem because mm -hmm. that's the thing that I, I, I love to do. So my I use the Q School to put my, my mindset for this year, for 2020, and it went a lot better than I expected. It, it helped me to come back to the Challenge Tour and get to the last 16, the first tournament. And I played really well the four tournaments of the Challenge Tour. I think my overall average was 90 or, or, or above 90. And that's because you know, uh, one of the games I had a 70 odd average because the mm. guy I played was not very good. And I think I beat him 5 0 with 70 odd average. So that pushed my, put, put my average down. But it means how well I was playing, you know. And um, and this last tournament before the, the break, um, the Players' Championship, um, I beat Aaron Bean in the first round. And then I had a hell of a match against Ian White. You know, he was streaming and I was 100 plus average all the mm -hmm. time until the very last leg, I think. And um, I ended up losing, but I played really well. And I was really glad that I could put my game back to where it belongs. You know, that gave me the, the confidence I needed. Before I talk more about the Challenge Tour and the Players' Championship, I still want to go back to Q School 
first. Um, what many surprised was that your dad also played on Q School. Um, yeah, how, how was that? Oh, did, did, yeah. Did it, did it also help you get the uh, the positive uh, mind in the darts game again? Or, yeah, how was it? So, yeah, just, just one little thing. Um, it was not my dad that played, it was my oh. brother, because they have, oh. they had, they have this, exactly the same name. Oh, but, sorry, sorry. No, that's fine. But my dad was with me. He came here okay. as a surprise for me, so he was following my games on the, on the, um, uh, in the Q school, well, me and my brother, you know, and um, it's, it's always nice to talk to someone that is um, more experienced than you, you know, um, mm. they know how to treat tough patches in your life better yeah. than you do so i opened up my heart with, with my dad and it was it was just brilliant it actually helped me a lot to to get over my my issues so it was, it was very good and and to play with him watching me it's it's always he always gave me an, an extra two or three percent you know and I, i'm sure the some games that i won and some finish that i I took it out there, you know, mainly against Stephen Burton. You know, I when I look back and I and I saw him, I just like, yeah, that mm -hmm. thing. You know, just just one person I could be grateful to. Yeah, it, it, your dad gave you some some extra power in those games. Yeah. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. I think I think the main reason for my confusion was also that I know that your father. Uh, played a big role in Brazilian darts. At least he, he was a darts player, right? Yes, yes. He was a dart player from, um, well, since I was born, before I was born, really. He always played, uh, he always was big, uh, top maybe three or five in Brazil of all times. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, yeah, even now that he doesn't play anymore, he's still sponsoring tournaments, he's still sponsoring uh, federation and even dark players to go to tournaments so he doesn't doesn't get any money back um, but he does this for for love really and yeah he he always played and he will always play he will, he will always play a big big side in Brazilian dark federation really yeah. it's almost an obvious question but was he the reason for you to play to start playing darts Yes, he was. Um, not because he, well, it was because he played us, but not because of that. It was just, um, I never had to, I never had time to spend with him because he moved to, to a city about 500 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. Um, and he had another family, you know, he was split with my mother when I was two, and I never had time to, to spend with him really. It was about 10 days a year. And when I was 15 or 16, I decided to play a few tournaments in Brazil just just to see my dad, you know, just to meet with my dad. And I could not even, I, I didn't even want to throw darts. I just want to register myself to be in the same room as him. And yeah, things started from there. And I played a, a few games and I won. Um, and I beat a lot of good players in Brazil in my first tournament. And the second tournament, I think we traveled together. We, we shared a room. And to me, that was unbelievable, sharing a room with my dad. Mm -hmm. and, and since then, we became like best friends, you know. And that's why I decided to make one step over and, and maybe give something back to darts because I really own darts something that's very important to me you know and yeah i'll, I'll, I'll never I, i would die fighting for that to make that big in brazil and south america yeah that's my dream it, it almost sounds like a like a movie the story of you becoming close with your dad because of darts that's 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 a great great story <laughs> maybe one day become a movie <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> If I made uh, if I make a world champion, that would be some some story to tell. Yeah. It would be a great doc documentary, definitely. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's let's go to the challenge tour. Um, well, 2000, 2018 was your year. You won a challenge tour. Um, 
the first player from South America to do so. So that's a big accompli- accomplishment, of course, but also for you indi- individually. Um, uh, yeah, 2018 was a big year. You did well. Um, 2020, the start at least, didn't really went that great. You, of course, the first tournament, you got into the last 16, which is a fine result. But after that, it didn't really went like you want to be. I think so. Do you do you have any reason for that? Um, no, I don't have any reasons. Uh, I'm working on it. Um, t- uh, 2018, as you said, uh, I, I reached my my peak. I think, um, but uh, I've had a few setbacks um, in terms of knocking on my confidence. Every every year was. Um, getting one step back every uh, one step forward uh, every year I was improving myself and in 2018 although I won the challenge tour I I didn't see the improvement so I start changing things in 2019 and that was when things went wrong because I didn't change it to the better I changed it for the worst so in 2020 my only goal is come back to the game I was in 2018 and let the results tell. You know, when I I came back to my old arts, I came back to my old um, equipment, flights, shafts, points, even points that was changing. Now I put the points that I won the challenge too. So I'm mm-hmm. basically trying to replicate my good form of 2018 back again. And it's been working because there's a lot of things that people can't see uh, behind the scenes. So I've been playing really well, not only practicing, but in local tournaments. And I, I've i won more tournaments in three or four months, uh, three months this year than I, mm. won, than I won in the entire 2019. So that, that means that my game is back. I just yeah. need... I just need to come back to the, the uh, professional circuit and show with that, you know. Yeah, well, I think the one chance you had on Players' Championship uh, Tournament 8, um, except, of course, in the game against Aaron Beanie, where you didn't really have to show that big of a level. You already talked about a really high level of a game against uh, Ian White. Um w- yeah, you lost the game, but still, was that game a confirmation about your um, your level getting uh, yeah, higher yeah. again? I, um, I think I knew my my game was already back in there. I just needed to prove, you know. And although in the numbers in the end against against Aaron Bini didn't show it. But if you have a look, I was five new up and uh, I was averaging, I think I was averaging uh, above 90, mm. you know. So it was only after five new that I dropped my level because it, it was, it's something that I, sh- I learned from it because I relaxed, everything was going in and I was taking my doubles and I was taking my time for them to make, to make the sixth leg. I took too much time. You know, and I, I will never let this happen again. If I if I'm five new, I will I'll, I'll, from now on I will just kill the game because I I fell after he made two or three legs. I fell under pressure, and I should never feel under pressure when you five new up. You mm-hmm. know, so I was playing well. I, of course, I didn't play as well as I played against Ian White, but I had time in that game, and. Um, I instead of going for bull shot, I was going to 18 to leave 16, and then instead of finishing first dart, I was finishing three darts. No, these things drop to your average, but it doesn't mean you play a lot worse. I, I was playing as well as I was playing against Ian White, I just had more time, and that's normal when you instead of t- f- finishing one dart or two darts, you're finishing three, and your, your average goes down. So, I mm-hmm. think it played well, it's just, just a matter of how to. To look at the game inside out, you know, and and then you can you you see that I was not um, as bad as the final average suggests, you know. Yeah, 
Um, about that weekend, because that was a very weird uh, Players' Championship weekend. Lots of tour card holders, holders uh, didn't go also because because of the coronavirus. You're now 57th on the Challenge Tour. Um, yeah, what did you think when you got a call of the PDC, or I don't know how that goes, that you uh, you got a chance again, chance again to play on the Players' yeah. Championship? I was playing a tournament. I was marking a game, and oh. my manager and my manager Matt Kelkin didn't stop calling me. And I was with the phone in my pocket, and I was trying to send an automatic ma- ma- um, message, just like, "Can I call you later?" And he replied, "No, needs to be now." And I'm mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god!" So I stopped the game. I told the guys, "Like, guys, it's something wrong. I need to get this call. I never get call." And um. And then I spoke with my manager, and he said, "You win next. Uh, you win for tomorrow. Uh, can you make it?" But I was in Liverpool, which is about two and a half hours away. I needed to come back home, pick my things up, and then go to uh, to Barnsley. Um, but even though I said yes, I I am coming, and I ju- I finished the tournament and come back home. When I got Barnsley about midnight, slept Ooh. well, got a little bit late in, uh, in the. Um, play championship but I think I was I, I had enough rest and I was prepared to play again you know I and you know what I I don't care if if it was because of a crisis I don't care what what were, what went wrong there I just took the opportunity and I was ready to take the opportunity and I show everyone that it's not because I'm 57 players in the uh, in the challenge tour that I cannot play with the uh, against the best because my game is better my game is back and I feel better than ever you know when opportunity is there to be taken if it wasn't me if someone someone else would and I don't care if it, half of the players had to go home I care that I was there and I was ready to to take the mm-hmm. opportunity about the World Cup of Darts uh, you played the World Cup of Darts with three different uh, players Alexandra Satin, Bruno Rangel, and Arthur Valli. I'm sorry for my <laughs> how no I say problem. the names. You actually okay. Did well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, the big question is: Is there going to be a fourth different player? Um, it, it will probably be yes. It yes. Probably be, yes. Okay. There are okay. there are. I think there are three main competitors this year, and none of them is one of my partners before. Um, my brother has been has been practicing a lot with me here, and he sometimes when his game is on, he is unbelievable. He's so natural, and he can go there and win if he gets his his mindset. Um, there is another guy called Juan Vitor, that is a guy that I am mentoring in Brazil. Mm-hmm. He's he's been playing only for one year, but he's already finished a nine daughter leg. Um, so that's that shows how good the guy is. Um, he he's been playing with against players that average 45, 50, but he's averaged around 85 in the the tournament in Brazil. So he's a very very um, interesting player. He doesn't have the experience. He's young. He's only 18. He might get nervous in the qualify, but he's one to look at. And my old teammate from Brazil, Bruno Amaro, uh, we, we used, used to play pass together. And now he's back in the game after a five years break. And he's been, been practicing a lot and he's got experience. He has already represented Brazil um, in, in I, I, I don't even know how many uh, tournament, international tournaments. So I think it will be a... a one of these three to get this year. Yeah, and how is that going to be decided? Is there going to be a qualifier or do you uh, know more about that? Uh, we are waiting for the official letter of the PDC to confirm or delay the um, or postpone the, the World Cup. And we will see. Because uh, at, at this moment, uh, it, it, the qualifier that is supposed to be um, next week, it won't, it won't happen. You know, because uh, no, it's supposed to be in two weeks' time, I think, and it won't happen because of this crisis. So we need to wait 
to see what the next date will be for the World Cup because it's probably going to be changed. And after that, we will schedule a qualifier again and and make players travel to uh, to play these qualifiers. No, I want to. I want to. I I know that this gonna probably drag a few players out of the tournament because everything's is closed now and people will need to work and um, these things happen. But as long as the best players are there competing, I don't mind. I just want someone that is good, that has been playing good darts, you know, mm-hmm. and I think one of these three, they will have a good chances to, to uh, win the qualifier. Okay. Um, well, we're already talking about uh, darts in Brazil now. Um, yeah, can you tell us more about the darts scene in Brazil? Yes, I can. Um, I have I have been getting a lot of uh, response of my new YouTube channel. So I set up a YouTube channel with my brother and our wife. So it's four of us. It's called Na Mosca. Um, and... I've been trying to teach players, uh, trying to teach, teach people how to play darts and give information about tournaments and talking about a little bit of history. And and this has been getting some um, visualizations in, in, for people in Brazil. It's been really good. You know, we only set up this two or three months ago and we have been having some good feedbacks you know more people are interested so what i can see is now that all the information that was missing in brazil it is it's not missing anymore um we've got another state trying to set up a federation that's federation in brazil we only have three now but there will be a fourth coming up uh, and we know that sao paulo is the biggest city they still run a league there. They just don't have a, a federation. So that will be the um, if they come back uh, to to the Brazilian Darts Federation, they, they set up a São Paulo Federation. Um, there will be more federations than ever in Brazil. So I think the work's been been doing, been getting done there, and I'm really happy for that. You know, I'm trying to help as much as I can in Brazil. Mm. Yeah, you you are living in England now. Is it difficult to help Brazilian darts? Yes, it is because it's very difficult to help people that doesn't want to be helped, you know. And what I think is the old school player darts in Brazil, they didn't want to be helped. The the old, old organized, the the old board of director, they didn't want to be helped. But now. Um, some of these has changed because these these people setting up new federations, they are all new players, so I can get into their minds first. And in Rio, they had changed the, the board of directors as well. So I, mean, uh, I managed to get a re- very good deal with them to work alongside with them. And they changed a lot of the format, a lot of the rules, the old rules, you know. And I'm really glad of that. And in exchange of that, I'm giving uh, a sponsorship. You know, me and my dad are supporting, giving full support to um, to the federation there. So we are, for example, paying for um, the venues, you know, where, where they, they need to go, where they want to go, you know. And this has been bringing more people. They are, they are in, doing a very nice uh, work with pubs in Brazil as well, or even bars that can we can set up okay. uh, that board. So I think now we are really putting one step up and moving forward finally after five years, six years living in England and trying to help people that never wanted to be helped. Finally, last year, we managed to get things rolling in Brazil. Um. Well, you're already a big ambassador of Brazilian darts, of course. But um, this year you also uh, played an exhibition, for example, in Costa Rica. Um, it, it was in the, in combination with the, the CDC. That, that's an Ameri- the American tour giving tour cards to Costa uh, Rican players. 
Um, besides Brazil, um, are there any other countries that we have to look for? Uh, also, I'm also talking about the Central American countries that you know of. Um, yes, uh, to be honest, all the Central America countries they are very good. You know, the Caribbean parts they are they are they have very good players. They don't have many players, but they have very good players. There's one player in particular which has already played in the uh, PDC World Championship. That is uh, Sudesh Fritzberg. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know his last name. Yeah, yeah. but he's uh, Fritz Gerald. Yeah. So he's a very good player, uh, left-handed, very natural. He doesn't practice, but every time I, I go up against him, he just put a, a different level of game. You know, yeah. he's you, very good. You uh, played you played him on the, the exhibition, right? I no, not in the exhibition. I played him in the final of ah. the uh, qualifier last year of the um, oh, World, that's World right championship qualifier, and I beat him just just six four. You know, so he raised his game up really well against me. He's getting used to play me now, and that's dangerous because sooner or later, I know he's, he 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 will be there to to take the title, and I don't want this to happen. But but I would say the better structure that we have now in South America is from Costa Rica. They are doing a very nice work. They have about they are just a small small country okay they have about three to four hundred players and they all in the federation they all play the tournament so i think when you have this level of competitive playing against each other sooner or later there will be a diogo portela from costa rica as well making the move you know i believe that because they are they are smaller than rio rio is just a state in brazil they are smaller than that and they have a 10 times more players than we have, you know what I mean? So I think there's a nice job coming from them and there's, there's opportunity will come for them sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope those Costa Rican tour card holders uh, actually participate in those CDC events uh, too, to get some uh, some more experience. Experience. Um, if I, if I um, understand you, then most of the development now is in Brazil and in Central America, but if you look at countries like Argentina, Chile, is there something going on over there too, or not that much? Yes, there is, and um, we uh, we all it's it's hard because I don't have a team of of people to to do the work for me. So I'm only in Brazil once a year, and as much as I want to do the job, I need to spend time with my mom, and you know, because I don't see her. I only see her. One to two weeks um, uh, a year. So when I'm there, I want to spend time with my mother family as well. But um, that we we've been in touch with people from Chile. I don't know much what's the work in progress in Chile, but I know they have a lot of players as well. In Argentina, I am um, well. I consider two um, big friends of mine since we start doing this um, this work in South America. They are working as much as they can, but the economic crisis in, in, in Argentina is just terrible. You know, we are setting up to do one of the PDC qualifiers or maybe one exhibition like I did in Costa Rica. We are set up to do this in Argentina as well. So I'm working really close with these guys, but I, I don't have much time, you know, and this is one thing that I need a people... Um, group of people we you know maybe a team to support me but because there is no much there's no money involved it's hard to find the right people to do the job so i'd rather take it, it, it slow you know mm -hmm. step by step then rush into something that i will regret later you know and i know that there is federations in in colombia as well panama reached us last year um, we are. I'll probably do my next exhibi exhibition in Panama because it's close to Costa Rica. Um, Guiana, they do have a nice structure there. Uh, I want to come back to the Caribbean as well because I've been two or three times for the Caribbean Cup. I qualified this year, but I didn't have. Um, well, this year is a, a little bit different because I'm getting my first kid, and she she's born. She will be born. 
roughly the same dates as the Caribbean Cup, so I couldn't do. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but I want to come back to the Caribbean and maybe open the mind of the people in Caribbean as well. And they never, never, never step forward. So I want to make sure they they change the patch and and go to the right direction. You know that's that's what I want to do. But if they want to, they don't want to help. Then what 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 more can I do? You know. Mm-hmm. Well, let's hope uh, the development in the future of uh, South American, Caribbean, and the Central American darts will uh, will continue. And I think I think your work definitely uh, helps uh, with that. Um, before we we end this uh, uh, podcast, uh, we always have um, one small part, and it's about a good story we've heard from. Well, this time another player because we interviewed, uh, we talked to Mike De Decker, uh, a Belgian yeah. tour card player, and um, well, I think Mike can tell more about that. Ask the question. Yeah, we called in the Netherlands uh, "mooie verhalen," uh, translated uh, is good stories. But we have talked to uh, Michael Decker uh, two podcasts ago, and he said uh, that you sleep next to him. It was f- very pleasant, according to your Belgian friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shared a bed, but it was not only with Mike the Decker. I shared a bed with a lot of players. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he said, so... G- no. Dimit- Dimitri on the back to, uh, as well, Jermaine Watamina, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I always did a little strip tease to you, <laughs> Ronnie Hybrids. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to do things like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you really are the the, the uh, someone who makes the jokes around the darts players. At least that, that's what we heard what we've heard of Mike the Decker. Yes, yes, I like, um, that's that's just my way to go and that's one thing that I'm trying to bring into my game as well because I am a ha- happy person, I am a person that make, can find a joke no matter what the situation is, I, I really am more positive than negative, you know, and I what, what I realized last year was that I was taking it too serious and i never took it never too serious in my life Need, not even when i had a, a company in brazil or was partner of a company i always had time to enjoy it to make fun of something and then do the right job you know and that's what i'm tra- trying to do this year i just trying to bring my happiness the way i am the, the way i'm making jokes about everything the way i don't care about things into my gaming darts and I hope it works for the next two or three years, you know, so I can mm-hmm. get my full card because it's been a while and I think I deserve it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a great adi- attitude and great look into the future of you to end this podcast. Um, well, we want to thank you, Diogo, to be part of this. I think uh, we really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, anytime you need me, I'll, I'll be back. Yes. 